Hey all, Choi Boy here. Welcome to another video. Sorry I missed out on the April 2022 Shazzy's portfolio update. I had a lot of things going on in May and it was quite a hectic month for me. So I decided to kind of skip that and I'm back for the May 2022 Shazzy's portfolio update. So just a disclaimer before we start, I'm not a financial advisor. Please take everything I say with a grain of salt do your own research and cross validate everything I say in this video. Please do not buy or sell just because I mention it in this video. I am an amateur just like you guys that just keeps up with the latest news and kind of talk about investments and look into investments a bit more in my leisure time. But that doesn't make me a professional or certified person to give you advice. So keep that in mind and we will get straight into it. There has been some new full year reports come out for most of these companies I hold. So it would be pretty interesting to quickly scan over those reports and what has changed in the past financial year for each of these companies. And we'll go through the numbers and see how it looks like. Okay, so the value is 12,160 bucks. Now I swear that was 12,500 or 600 bucks earlier today, but it is currently just over six. It's like 630. Um, it's dipped to 12,160. So talk about volatility. It seems like something has dipped. I think it might have been Plexia. So people are not liking Plexia as you can see, but um, it is what it, it is. So that's the value. So we got total return of negative 8,587. So it is slightly up from the past one month, you know, in April, it did dip to like around 11,500, something like that. It did come back up mainly because Blackberry did recover just a bit from the dip, but not nothing major, nothing significant, of course. Plexia keeps dipping and Mainframe dipped quite a bit and also Raycon dipped quite a bit as well. So it's not a good market and I'm pretty sure everyone else is suffering from these kind of dips and bear market we call it. But it is a hard time to make good investment decisions and it is a time where you see a bit of red in your portfolio overall. But just remember it's not you, it's everyone else pretty much in the market. It's quite hard to be in a stock that is actually going up in time like now. It's just the market is way too bearish at this point in time. So the simple return is 31.49%. So that's quite bad, really bad actually. Um, yeah, the unrealized guidance is just going through the roof in the negative side, but what can we do? Just wait it out, might not even sell it at this point because I was thinking to cash out and buy a property, but I might never touch this public portfolio ever actually because it's so down, it's not really worth, you know, grabbing anything out of this at this point in time. So that's kind of where I stand with my portfolio at the moment. It's not the best. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you might not be as bad as me, but it does show you if you're not diversified properly or whatnot, then you are prone to being quite damaged hard in a bear market like this, especially when I hold mostly tech companies. Um, yeah, it's not good. It, even if they do have good financials in a time like now, the market pressure does overcome individual companies in a time like now. That's why a lot of companies, whether they're doing bad or good financially, it doesn't matter. They're kind of dipping with the market, but how much it dips depends on how bad their financials are and also how much profit they made in the past cycle of the bullish phase. So that's why tech companies tend to, you know, take a hit more compared to other traditional kind of companies that are not so uh, driven by hype and whatnot. So first company, we're going to look into BlackBerry, my only US stock in this portfolio. It is at 5,542 bucks. It is sitting at $6.56. So it has dipped to like $4.89 bucks. Like that is crazy amounts. I would have never expected BlackBerry to dip this much, but it has dipped this much in mid-May, but it has recovered a bit since. And that's why it was down to like 11K, like here, then it came back up 
nicely to the $6.50 range. But it is still quite low. It is a good time for me to kind of buy the dip. I do believe in BlackBerry. Nothing fundamentally changed and I think they only have way up from here. But we'll see how it goes. Um, it's quite a nice little recovery here, but not sure at this point in time. It might be a dead cat bounce. We might need to look into that and confirm in a later date. But BlackBerry, what happened? So if we look at simply Wall Street, we'll see that there has been some new updates. So as I mentioned, a lot of these companies would have given out their full FY22 financial reports, meaning they have consolidated all the financials for the past financial year, which was March 2021 to March 2022. So putting that in mind, the PE ratio is finally positive because they are actually positive this time in the last quarter, uh, but that does push the PE ratio quite high at 315x, which is quite high, but you can't do much about that. PB ratio is 2.4x. I think it is a bit on the high side, but I don't think it's that bad, honestly speaking. But as you can see, um, if we have a better graph here, you can see the earnings did dip in 2021, then it has been on an uptrend. So the revenue has been quite consistent, nothing too much going on with the revenue, but the earnings has been coming up and it's finally just peaked over the positive side of the spectrum and it is 12 million per year in earnings uh, in the past quarter. So as you can see, revenue has not improved but their earnings is coming back up. We'll continue to look at it, but I am pretty bullish on BlackBerry. Even during a bear phase, I think they would have a pretty decent go at coming back into a bullish run. Maybe not in the next year, but it could actually happen any time because it's dipped so much already. We just don't know if it's near its intrinsic value, then it will not dip any further, but it is kind of hard to know Blackberry's intrinsic value. So other than that, there hasn't been too much as for the fact that they've been paying down their debt. It is always a good look for companies to be paying down their debt in a time like now. Um, so keeping at it would definitely help. There are some individuals in the company that's been selling. Actually, it's only one person that's been selling. But other than that, not much insider trading as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. Blackberry, I still think they are well kind of prepared for a rocket fuel launch pretty soon. I think so. But I've been saying this for the past year. Who really knows? But I think um, the market's really not helping BlackBerry, especially with the whole meme stock uh, categorization it was in last year with Wall Street bets. It didn't really give BlackBerry a good reputation. But I think people are realizing actually BlackBerry is actually a decent company. Like everything they kind of provide services and products they're really good like IV QNX you know the cyber security stuff like silence you know they're all really good so I think it's going to be a good look for BlackBerry in the coming months uh, for them to prove themselves so that is BlackBerry um, so it has recovered just a bit in May so we'll keep our eyes on that main freight is the one that you guys picked for me from till seven figures pick a stock so from that content, I was going to sell it sometime this week because I do have a live stream coming up on Sunday this week. So keep tuned for that. It's normally at 8 p.m. on a Sunday and I will kind of put up a reminder with a community post. So you are posted. Also, it will be posted as a story in my Instagram. So follow my Instagram if you want to get those updates on stories um, for these latest posts and live streams. So. Main freight, it's dipped like $5.38 because um, I put 100 bucks in here. It's dipped 5.38%, but actually, if we look at their financials, it's actually not too bad. So it is sitting at $74.97. But if we look at the numbers, so let's quickly look at that. Um, if we look here, it will go to simply Wall Street first. They are worth $7.6 billion New Zealand dollars, uh, which is not small in New Zealand. It's quite big. It's in the big company categorization of the NZ stock market. If we just scroll down a bit, their PE ratio is 21.3x, which is not bad 
for its industry um, apparently to the average as well it's pretty close but it is just a bit um, lower than that so that's good 5.3x PB ratio is not the best actually that's pretty bad but um, let's keep at it it does have a monopoly around logistics in New Zealand at least so it is quite big in that kind of sense and that's how a lot of these big companies in New Zealand operate they have a big monopoly because they've been around for such a long time they hold a lot of the control over their industry and sector so um, if we just scroll down just a bit, you can see their revenue is definitely on a big rising uptrend, which is really good to see. Also, you can see that the earnings is kind of coming up with it, not proportionally, but it is coming up on an uptrend as well. So they are kind of going from like a average 4 to 4.5% profit margin, and they're sitting at around 6.8% for the last quarter. So that's pretty good um, if they can keep this up. So definitely um, a pretty good look. They are paying down their debt, which is always good. Um, they're doing it very slowly, but very steadily, which is good. And their equity is rising. So their debt to equity ratio is pretty good. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. And also not to mention, they do pay a bit of dividends um, and their ex-dividend date is July 14th. So if you want to get dividends for main freight, do buy it before the state and you will be, uh, what do you call it, in the list to get paid out your dividend payouts. So I think, you know, main freight's a pretty good buy in a time like now. Um, I thought it was quite expensive, but looking at the numbers, I think it is kind of well justified. Their earnings is pretty meh, but for a logistics company, we don't expect large kind of profit margins. So that is, that's okay for what I can see. Their dividends could be better, but um, I guess that could come in a later date once they kind of stabilize their kind of financials and whatnot. So other than that, there hasn't been much going on with main freight. You can see a lot of their revenue kind of increases came from Asia. Um, of course, it's not a lot, not a big amount compared to the rest of the kind of continents they kind of uh, cover. So of course, New Zealand business, Australia business is much bigger. Um, also, Europe is bigger as well. Asia is on the lower side. Even America has got you know a lot of revenue uh, for main freight. So uh, there has been some you know, really good performance in Asia for them. So they say our best ever performance across Asia region. Uh, that's really good. So I think they are trying to expand their infrastructure. So we'll definitely keep an eye out for main freight in the near future. I will be selling main freight soon for the next till seven figures pick a stock. So uh, tune in for the next live stream for that. But um, it is kind of sad to say goodbye to main freight on a, on a loss, but it is what it is. <laughs> Um, can't do much. Hopefully it might go back up to, you know, 100 bucks before I sell it. Who knows? We got till Friday this week. So let's see where it heads to. I said it was going to be short, but maybe it's not. <laughs> we'll go to the next one real quickly. So it's Raycon. Raycon, I've been really bullish on Raycon for quite some time now. You guys know about it. I bought it mid last year. So it's been one year with Raycon. It's really good. I think it's still a really good company. It's, um, if we look at their results we don't even have to look at simply wall street if you just look their revenue increased a lot like like nearly 50 percent like i can't i can't do maths but you know it was 128 mil last year and it's 172 mil right so they're worth 343 mil and that's their revenue which is like half of their market cap which is really good the abita is the biggest point here because they increased their guidance on their beta so many times last year. And, you know, they increased it three times and still they bet their guidance. Like, I think their guidance stopped at around 53 mil. Like, it was like 40 something to 53 mil. That was their latest guidance. And it ended at 54.4. That's really good because the previous financial year in FY21, they were at 23.5 million, which is pretty much more than double of what they had last year in terms of EBITDA. So that's really, really good. Once again, Raycon did kind of ramp up their kind of supplies and also they kind of hit the right spot at the right time where, you know, with this whole pandemic and stuff like that and this whole rollout with 5G infrastructures, you know, space race and all not whatnot, you know, all these kind of things require Raycon's products. They're in a really good 
position where they can supply for so many demands of the global needs of oscillators and whatnot. So net profit after tax 33.1 mil, which is really, really good compared to the financial year before, which is 9.6 mil. So you can see that there are really good, um, they're going full speed ahead. They're significantly, you know, utilizing the new opportunities that's captured from worldwide chip shortage. There's increased demand with, you know, lack of supply from the AKM fire last year. Was it last year? Something like that. Put Raycon in a really good position. So it's really good news for Raycon. Honestly, I don't know why it would still dip other than the market pressuring the company stock to, you know, not come up. But I think it is well positioned for a bullish run uh, pretty soon once this bear market ends. So that's Raycon. If we go back and go to the last company, we got Plexure. My, that's just the saddest story I have in my whole po public portfolio is Plexure. Um, yeah, so it is kind of sad to see the prices back down to the price when I first started with Plexure. I used to work at Plexure around four years ago now, and they were sitting at around 18 to 20 cents around here in June. So I joined June 2018, and it's back down to those prices pretty much. Of course, they did a few capital um, raises and stuff like that, so there is a lot of dilution going on. So the cap the market cap will be higher than back when it was in 2018. You always need to take account how many capital raises it's done. That's why you look at market cap rather than the price because the price could be well diluted and you know today's $10 per stock per share might not be the same as 10 years ago or something like that for every company. So you need to look into it a bit more than the price. That's why I don't really look at the price of a stock. I look at the market cap and I kind of compare it from there, not the price, okay? It depends on how many shares um, you have in the um, company and like total outstanding and that number could change for any company for any reasons. You know, they might burn it, they might do a capital raise and dilute it and create a bunch more shares and whatnot. You know, there's a lot of things that might go on there. But they did have a full year results for FY22 as well. So if we quickly look through that, they have tasks, kind of re uh, revenues coming in to the Plexure's kind of results this time is six months of it. So 6.4 mil from tasks, not a huge amount for what I've expected. Um, they did pay a lot of money for tasks, but hopefully that increases over time. If we look at this, so they have been um, doing a lot of good business. So I can see task has been kind of um, bringing in a lot of new business for Plexure in general, you know, in terms of financials. But um, yeah, I think it's still got a way to go if that's the contribution towards, towards the revenue. Um, task positive a beat the contribution in FY22, which is okay. That's good compared to Plexia. Of course, um, Plexia had increased numbers of users on their platforms with 323 million users, which is quite a lot. Probably a lot of them would be from McDonald's for what I can um, see. Salary and wage cost reductions of 40%. That's probably coming from the massive restructure they had last year where they kind of nuked all the non-engineering kind of roles in the company and they got rid of most of them for what I know. Um, and yeah, it was quite a big restructure and I don't know how people would have thought about that, but um, there was executive changes and whatnot. There was a lot of things last year. So uh, for all those reasons, their beat the level loss was 15.6 mil with a net loss after tax of 24.1 mil, which is crazy. But that's prior to the FY22 restructuring. But whatever, they have 13.9 mil net cash left. So they do have a bit of cash remaining to run at a loss but hopefully it doesn't go for too long because if it goes to a point where they have like one year left like one year worth of expenses left and then as their cash in the bank then they're been in trouble so we'll have to keep our eyes for that but i will be looking forward to the next kind of ripple half year results or something like that just to make sure what's happening with this company because honestly it's dipped so low i can't really sell it anymore but at the same time you know, I don't want to buy more because it's not giving me any confidence. So I'm just holding on to it. 
which is probably my biggest mistake so far on this YouTube channel, but um, it is what it is. I guess there were some emotions involved in my investment in Plexia, but not that I kind of saw all this coming. There was so much drama in Plexia that I did not expect at all, but it is what it is. So the group results, the total results, 15.6 mil, as we just said, with 9.3 mil a beat the loss in the second half year. Overall, they're not doing so well, but that was a hectic financial year. So let's hope in FY23 they become positive again, because I do really want to see the earnings positive. If it's not positive in the next financial year, I'm very, very concerned. And by the time the share price would be pretty much zero, I guess. Um, it, it can't dip any lower than that. The market cap is way too low for what Plexia is operating um, its business at. So I think it is a bit unfair, but at the same time, it has done a lot of things that a lot of investors might be quite unsure of the future for Plexia. It was quite a roller coaster ride. There has been some good stocks and good financial reports and some bad one like Plexia, but at the end, this is investing and this is the risk anyone can pick good stocks during a bull market but the good investors will pick out you know good stocks even during a bear market okay and that's why you need to diversify just a bit of course my private investments are a bit more you know you know consistent it's, it's a bit more safe um, because it is a bulk of my um, money but uh, let's see where it goes from here. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, put a comment down below what you thought of the portfolio update today. If you haven't subscribed yet, give me the subscribe. It doesn't take long, just a click bell notification for my next updates and live streams where you can chat with me and I can answer any of your questions or uh, make me talk about any topic you wish uh, to hear about um, and you can do that. And I will catch you in the next live stream later on Sunday, coming Sunday. So keep tuned for that and I will catch you in the next live stream. All right, till next time, I'll catch you around. Later.